For over 40 years, Catherine Deneuve has captivated audiences. <laughs> oh my God, true. I feel dead when you say that. <laughs> it's true. All right, let's start over. That's <laughs> For over 40 years, Catherine Deneuve has captivated audiences, becoming a cultural icon for her native France. She's been directed by some of the world's best, Truffaut, Polanski, and Bunel. She has appeared in over 90 films, including Belle du Jour, The Hunger, and her Oscar-nominated performance in Indochine. Here is a brief look at an extraordinary career. In the maison des mille. J'ai touché à rien, alors mais non, sa main. Perrault. Et il s'est pas suicidé parce qu'on se donne pas la mort avec son enfant dans les bras. Allez, calme-toi, Yann, calme-toi. C'était ça la journée de liberté. Alors vous étiez tous d'accord. Il était libre, libre de mourir, libre de se faire des sangs. Crois-tu qu'il me prendra comme ça S'il me refuse tel que je suis, c'est qu'il n'éprouve pas pour moi des sentiments profonds. Si par extraordinaire il m'accepte, je n'aurai pas de raison de douter de lui, et je serai bien sotte de le repousser. I don't know what's happening to you, but there's nothing to be frightened of. As long as you put your faith in me, give me time, trust me. Trust you. I did trust you, and look what happened. It's a bruise. It will fade. I know it's a bruise. Look, I'm going to ask you one more time. What have you done to me? I've given you something you never dare dream of. What? Everlasting life. Ne lui dites rien, je vous en prie. Faites un effort pour me comprendre, vous au moins. Je suis perdue. Tout se passe malgré moi. Je n'y peux rien, je ne peux pas résister. Je sais qu'un jour, il faudra que j'expie pour tout ce que j'ai fait. Mais sans ça, je ne pourrais pas vivre. Après tout, faites ce que vous voulez avec moi. Mais tu es complètement fou, mais qu'est-ce que tu fais Mais tu ne sortiras pas d'ici, mais qu'est-ce que tu veux Alors, comme concentration, c'est ça que tu veux Laisse-la passer, laisse-la passer Tu ne sortiras pas d'ici Her latest film, Dance in the Dark, teams her up with one of the most controversial directors working today, Lars von Trier. I'm pleased to have Catherine Deneuve back at this table. Welcome back. Hello. You were singing while mm. we were watching. Can you just give me a little more of that? Can you just show me what you were singing? What were you singing? I don't think I can really sing, you know, like that. It's just that uh, when we saw the, the clip of yeah. Embers of Cherbourg, I realized that you never forget, you know, uh, the words and the the music of uh, of a thing you have done like that because you have to rehearse for such a long time, and after that it's in your head. When I would be unable to give you lines, you know, from a, a script or yeah, normal right, story, right. but you can remember songs. Oh yeah, especially numbers of Shogo, yeah. Yes. Do you like to sing? Yes, you I do? sing everywhere. You do. I mean. In a taxi, in the street, when my <laughs> children were young, you know, they were complaining that she said, please, mommy, don't do that. You know, they thought it was too, you know, something too special to do. And uh, I whistle a little. And uh, but children don't like parents to do things like that and be noticed. You know, they don't. No, it brings attention to them, and children don't like for their children parents to be the like object that. of attention. Exactly. If you could go with a gray coat to school, that would be the best thing you could do for them. <laughs> I, know, I know. It embarrasses them. It's doesn't very it? strange. And when they're very young, yes. Yeah. Mm. And it must be difficult for your children then. So you had to make sure that difficult to watch. Well, have a difficult like because that? you would attract attention. Yeah, I suppose I had to make even more right. effort than most parents have to do. You know, to no, not attract attention, but. I didn't go very often, you know, to get them at school, you know, not yeah. very often. What are they doing, your children? What kinds of lives? Uh, what kind of life? That would be even, for me, difficult to say. They are both single. Yes. They both have children. Yes. They are both actors. Ah. Yeah. My son is going to start a TV uh, thing, a uh, series, uh, next uh, two weeks' time. And my daughter is just uh, starting a film in Italy for the first time, playing in, uh, in Italian. And uh, she's struggling with Italian, even if she speaks yeah. very good Italian, because to act in a foreign language, it's, uh, it's difficult. And, um, and that's it. They are good parents, and they are very interesting personalities, yeah. both of them. Did you influence them, or just the fact that they, they admired what you did made them 
sort of like familiar the with the profession, to, yeah. Uh, I think, I think uh, it's difficult to know if you influence them without even thinking, you know, of, uh, I think that when you are that kind of parent and you do that kind of work, you always influence your, your children, not, uh, not even yeah. know, knowing it. I think sometimes you can see, you know, uh, advocates, you know, the, the lawyers, you know, whose children want to also to yeah, be lawyers right, later that's on. Right. That's something. Uh, but it's true that I was not too keen, you know, on my children becoming actors. And it's a mistake, I suppose, for me to have uh, had that kind of feelings because you think you can protect your children from having, you know, the difficulties you think they might have. Yeah. in their career, in their work, and it's, uh, they never encounter exactly the same kind of difficulties you think they will. It's just that you know a little more what might happen to them. But uh, it's, never th it's always their life, it's not yours, and they don't have the same, the same road that you are going to have. You cannot really... So I was not too much for it, but you know, they, they decided they wanted to do that, and they did it, and uh, I accept it completely. You know, I don't try to influence them on. Uh, Sometimes I try to discourage them, maybe, but not anymore. I mean, when they were someone young. once said to me that who I think it may have been Kirk Douglas said that he, that he set out to try to discourage his children as much as possible from becoming actors because he knew that if they wanted to, nothing he said would make uh, a yeah. difference. I think I tried not that hard, but I tried, but I never thought, you know, that uh, if they really wanted to be actors, you know, they would go through anyway. I didn't go that far I mean, in my thinking of trying to appeal to them, you know, in another direction. No, I didn't think really the same. Your parents were of the theater, weren't they? My father, yes, my father and my mother. My mother was even a, a young a child actress, you know. She yeah. was the uh, at the classic theater called L'Odéon, which is a little yeah. like the Comédie Française. And she was what we say the doyenne, which means she was the older one, you know, in the theater by 24. And my grandmother was the someone who, uh, I don't know how you say in English, you know, she said the words, you know, for the actors if they miss, you know, their lines. Script, you don't have that anymore. Yeah, you script. know, she was, you, you yeah, are in the front right, of the theater right, right. and you whistle the, um, so my, my grandmother was doing that. Yeah. You took your mother's maiden name, did you not? Yes, because when I started to do films, and it was really, uh, I thought it would be occasionally, it was not something I was sure, you know, to do. I just had to, to take a name because my sister had been starting in films before me. She was yeah. in, on stage, and uh, <coughs> she had kept our name, so I, I don't think it was, I didn't think it was possible then to, to have two sisters with the same name, so I didn't know what to do, and my mother said, but, well, take my name, you know, it was... For me, it was just for that film. I didn't think, you know, I, I was not sure I would be an actress. You know, it was just one one film, and I kept my mother's name. Yes. It's been a good life. Yes, in terms of professionally, it's yes, been yes a very good life. Professionally, it's true, a very good life. Mm. And you're working now as much as ever. It's true. You know, that's why it's been a good life. And I think <laughs> yes, I'm, exactly. And I'm very lucky. It's yeah. true. Because it's not very easy for a woman to work after a certain age, I think, in certain kind of profession. And certainly on, uh, in cinema, it's even worse than theater. You know, it's very difficult, uh, especially here in America, I've heard, to yeah. work after yeah, a certain age. I think it is age. true. They all, everybody talks about that. Mm. I mean, that there yeah. are not that many. And especially, interesting parts. Yeah. Interesting parts. Mm. And especially sort of in the middle of your, I mean, yeah. some actresses will say, you know, there's a middle period in which you can't find the kind of roles you want to play. And then when you reach a certain age, then you there's know. a whole nother. You know. Yeah, go from the mother lover to it, the it, grandmother. It, it, exactly. Yeah, it's <laughs> yes, true. There is a big exactly. gap to, to feel, to, feel to, to sort of try to feel there. It, it's different in Europe because I think you're allowed to grow older, you know, a little, uh, a little more in yes, Europe. I think so. For people to start yeah. with and for, for actors and actresses, especially for actresses. There are more interesting parts because maybe we have also a generation of directors, you know, who are uh, of a certain age and they want to tell stories of people of a certain age. And despite the fact, you know, that uh, the audience of uh, films is a very young audience, there are still people who can uh, make film about another kind of film, you mm. know, who does, doesn't have the same kind of audience, but there is still a... Uh, yeah, but we have a system of help, you know, for cinema in, uh, in France that help also, you know, for producers to, to do films like that. Mm. You've never been tempted to move to the United States. Uh, no, I, actually, I was never, you know, tempted to live uh, anywhere else than uh, <laughs> than uh, than France. You know, when I was married a long time ago, yes, I went to England, but England was very close to Paris, and uh, I moved there for a time, you know, and uh, 
I was going back and forth, and I almost settled, you know, in London. But it was for a time also where I was rehearsing for a film uh, musical, so I could stay in London. But I never really thought I could live anywhere else. And even when I got married, I didn't think, you know, that I would have to live really uh, in England, you know, for example. But my husband at the time was working very much and traveling mm -hmm. also very much, so it was not something very precise that I thought I, I could do, that I had to do. Yeah. The, um, I, I, I remembered recently because I was in Paris about, you know, you, f you were the symbol of France for a long time as Marianne. Your mm -hmm. face was... Yeah. Yes? Yes, on stamps. Yeah, so exactly, on stamps. Mm. I mean, in a sense, you were an icon for a long, long time. As no, but Marianne is not an icon. Marianne, uh, who is the, is the symbol of the republic, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think I feel more republican than anything, you know, politically, so it was... You think you feel more... Rep republican. Yeah. In France, it's different than here. Right. Oh, I know, I know, very much. Very yes, different. Yes, yes. Means, uh, you know, democracy, and uh, and I felt very... Uh, I thought it was uh, something I, I could identify with. No. This film, uh, I think... Uh, Lars von Trier said that you, you, me, you, me, <laughs> asked, <Really? laughs> to, asked to play the role. No. It didn't happen. No, it didn't happen like that. You know, that would be uh, too, I don't know, I think he would have been, you know, scared if I had, uh, I didn't know him. Yeah. I wrote him a letter, you know, after I was very, very moved. And it's the first time I wrote to a director after I had seen um, Breaking the Waves. Yes. And a I knew Wonderful that movie wonderful film and I was very very moved and I, I wrote to him it was sort of the first time and I had heard that he was preparing a film that he would do over 10 years and as he's in Europe you know and maybe the film was going to happen not only in Denmark but in some other countries in Europe I, I told him that if he was coming to, to France and the project you know was developing in that direction and with a French actors I would be very interested to meet him and work with him and he, he wrote me back a very, very nice letter saying that the project, you know, was not a project for him anymore. But he had written a, a musical that he was hoping Bjork would be the, yes. the major uh, the character in it. And uh, if I would consider to play um, Bjork's best friend in the film, that he would, uh, he would like very much me to, to read it. So that's how it happened. You read it and liked it? I read it and I liked it. I liked it because it was him, you know who wrote the script, and because also Bjork, you know, was going to write the music, and it reminded me of a very uh, unusual project, you know, like Umbrella of Sherbrooke 30 years yeah. earlier, where it was a musical, but a very different kind of musical than the musical we, we know, and that I love, actually, I love musicals. But um, the whole project, you know, was very, very different. But uh, no, I didn't ask him for the part, you know. Okay, I but, but in a sense, but it's, 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 in in a sense, sense you, it's I fair to say him. you wanted to work with him. Oh, yes, but there are a lot of directors I want to work with, you know, I never wrote before. <laughs> I don't know why Breaking the Waves, you know, sort of, uh, I don't know. But it, I, there are a lot of directors yeah. I would like to be But But this is with. the only one that you've ever written? Yes, first time, yes. To say, mm. I like mm. your work and... I like your film, you know, yeah. because, you know, I like this film more than uh, some other's film, you know. But I, I like his work anyway, and this film was very, very touching for me, very special, and... I felt like I wanted to. to Why tell was him. it touching? You mean breaking the waves or the mm -hmm. one? Breaking uh, the waves. Or yeah. dancer in the dark. No, breaking the waves. Yeah. Mm. Take a look at this scene. This is when Kathy, your character, takes Selma, played by Bjork, to the movie theater to watch a musical. Here it is to give you some sense of what the film is about. I think you're always so serious, Kathy. Oh, again we start. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think inside you're serious at all. I don't know. Not always. Walter. Why do you call me that? It's like someone who's... What? I don't know, just big and happy. Hey, I'm not that big. I'm happy, I don't know. Just need someone to pull it out. 